I know here in America, we are taught to work hard, save our money, perhaps buy a home, a car, and stuff like that. And perhaps in other countries, you all are taught that way as well. But what we are not taught as much, we are not taught to help others. We are pretty much taught to be very, very selfish. We are taught that if we were to help other people, we are not going to be able to save as much money or do as much as we should be able to do. So in order to succeed in life, pretty much, what you have to do is mind your own business and not really think of anyone else other than yourself or perhaps your family. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 through 25. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So what is that saying there? There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. So what this is saying, there are people that give and yet increaseth meaning that there is people that give and because of the law of reaping and sowing they are receiving more i don't know if that makes any sense and with the law of reaping and sowing you are always going to get back more than what you put in so if you do evil you are going to reap more evil than what you put out. When you are doing good, when you are giving, you are going to get more than what you put out. So there is that scattereth and yet increaseth. Why are you increasing? We are taught that when we give, we are not going to have as much as we would if we were to save. But what this is saying, this spiritual rule here, when you give, more is going to come back to you. There are people that want to get blessed by God. There are people that want more increase from God, but yet they are not doing the things they need to do to get blessed by God. Some people may believe that the only way that you can become blessed by God is by only putting money in church, which is totally wrong. That is only one way. But let me not get off topic. Okay. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat but it tendeth to poverty. So what is that saying? There are people that withhold. Hey, I have enough money. I have enough goods. But hey, I worked hard for what I have. And I am not going to give to anyone outside of my family. Because they just have to get what they can get, they have to work hard the same way as I. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat. So you have 
enough money. You have enough goods as it is, but you are selfish. And what this is saying, it is going to bring you to poverty. Think about this. Think about a time when you had so many goods. You had more money than what you have now. What was you doing back then? Were you a person that would help others? Would you give to other people? Or would you just think about yourself and not really care so much about other people? This is saying, because of that, we are not here for ourselves. We are here to help other people. Man, some people say that they want to get to heaven. But they are really selfish now. Our performance here is going to determine whether we are going to go to hell or heaven. So if you are selfish here on earth, how are you going to be if you go to heaven? You are going to be selfish there as well. Do you believe that when you go to heaven or if you go to heaven, let's say that you are selfish now. Do you believe that your spirit is going to change like, hey, I am selfish now, so when I get to heaven, I am not going to be selfish? No, you are going to be selfish there. That is the reason why you are not going to be there unless you change. You want things, but you are not willing to align yourself to the rules of God to receive it. I want to get blessed by God, but I am not willing to do what it takes to get blessed by God. I am just looking for him to place something in my hands, and I am not willing to change. The law of reaping and sowing. The reason why we go through so much stuff in life it's because God wants us to be a certain way. And when we yield to him, we get to go to heaven. In order to get to heaven, we have to act, speak, and think in a certain way. And if you are not willing to yield, if you are not willing to change, why would God take you to heaven? Imagine if God would allow all sinners to go to heaven. I would think that how earth is now, heaven would be the same way or worse if God would allow sinners into heaven. Of course, spiritual laws are not going to make earthly sense. Because earthly sense is self-centered. It only focuses on I. But when you think about heaven, God, and his principles, the focus is off you and on other people. I don't know if that makes any sense. Earthly sense, hey, I have to take care of myself. I have to do things on my own. I can't think for other people or I can't help other people because I won't have enough for myself. Spiritual, godly sense, heavenly sense, hey, I may not have a lot. You know, I may have 10 kids. I may have car bills, I may have all of these types of bills, but hey, I am going to help people anyway because based upon the Bible, it says that the more I give, the more I get back. So if I want more from God, I am going to give more of myself to people. 
So earthly sense don't make sense because it hurts you. Heavenly sense, godly sense makes more sense because it helps you. Earthly sense says, keep your money, save it, don't really care for others. That is earthly sense, self-centered sense, sinful sense, self-centered sense which is not going to take you anywhere because you are going to fail each and every time. Let me say this. I don't know if I said this already, but let me say this. There are times where I know this past year or earlier this year, I was finding out that I had to pay for this and that and this and this and that. And I was thinking, wow, what is going on? And the months where I would have to pay for so much, I would have people ask me for money. And I was thinking, like, when I do have money or money to give out and stuff like that, not too many too many people would ask me for money. But when it comes down to where I need extra money because of bills and stuff like that, people come my way asking for money. So that made me think, hey, perhaps I am being tested by God. Perhaps God is testing me to see if I am going to do what he says according to the Bible. Because we have to know that it is not a coincidence when you are being tested based upon the Bible. Nothing is ever a coincidence. If something seems too good to be true, not too good to be true, but if something seems like Hey, what is going on? Like, how can this happen right at this time? It is not a coincidence. Chances are you are being tested. So what if you say, well, I have all these bills and hey, I know that you are asking me for money. I know that you said you have not eaten anything for weeks. Hey, I have bills. I have to pay my rent, mortgage, so on and so on. I'm sorry. And you are wondering why bad things are happening to you. Wouldn't it be best to think, hey, perhaps I am going through this right here, or I have all of these bills because I am being tested. So if I passed this test, things are going to get better for me. But what if you continue to fail test after test after test? More bad things are going to happen to you. I know that as human beings, we see people who have nice cars and nice homes and stuff like that. And we may look at them and say, well, they are very well off, like they are really rich. You know, there is a thing called credit. Just because people have stuff does not mean that they are doing very well. Because there are people with so much stuff, that is why they are in debt. So you can't judge a person based upon what they have. It would make more sense to see how much debt they are in first and how much income they have coming in. So just, I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> hey, this guy has a Porsche, a very nice car here. This guy has a huge house. This guy is well off. This guy is rich. Not knowing how much stress this guy is under 
because he can't or having trouble paying his bills. We are only seeing the outside view of things, not the inside. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. The more you give, the more you get back. You are, you are always going to reap more than what you put in. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat. So you have more than enough for yourself, but you are not willing to help other people, but it tendeth to poverty. So when you do that, your finances are going to be messed up. Things are going to get bad for you. Well, whatever, Kevin. I am going to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> okay. 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Here it goes again. Verse 25. This is saying the same thing as the beginning of verse 24. The more you give, the more you are going to get back. So this is trying to push to you, hey, I want you to help other people. I want you to give to other people because I want you to be this way. People in heaven is this, look man, the way that God wants us to be, obviously these rules are in heaven as well. So if you want to go to heaven, why not follow the rules on earth? Follow these rules on earth. So the liberal soul shall be made fat. So you are going to reap what you sow when you give. It does not have to be always money. Like I said, perhaps your time, resources, so on and so on. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So three times, three times, it is telling you to give. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. First time, the liberal soul shall be made fat. Second time, and he that watereth shall be watered, watered also himself. Third time. So this is telling you three different times. In these two verses, when you give, more is going to come back to you. Well, Kevin, you know, this stuff is not really making sense. Spiritual laws are not going to make earthly sense because earthly sense is self-centered. It is selfish. It has nothing to do with what God intends for us. So, of course, earthly sense is not going to, I mean, spiritual sense is not going to make sense when you are thinking earthly. You can't think earthly when it comes down to heaven and hell because earthly sense can't comprehend heaven or hell. It can't. How can it? Think about it. All your life you are taught what you can see is pretty much the only things that are real. But when you begin to learn about God, you are learning about heaven and hell and faith and prayer and stuff like this. That does not make any earthly sense. This is why you have to transition your mind from the natural to the spiritual. I pray that this makes sense. From the natural to the spiritual. Okay, God bless.